Hi everyone, it is March and it is Breast Implant Awareness Month. So I want to talk today a little bit about breast implants. And breast implants, like many things in life, come in many, many, I'm talking hundreds of different shapes and sizes because no two people are alike, no two breasts are alike. Women have very individual breasts, even some women from her left breast to her right, right breast can be very, very different. And different sizes, shapes, textures of implants allow us to create a very nice natural result depending on the goals of the patient. So implants come basically two shapes, round implants and what we call anatomic, which some people refer to as teardrop. A round implant, when you look at it from the back, has a round base. And of course, when it's sitting on your ribs, you can see where it contours to the ribs and it gives you a lot of fullness all around the entire breast. And sometimes women want this and sometimes women don't want this. And I'm gonna explain that in a second. Versus a shaped implant, what we call an anatomic, where if you look at it from the back, it doesn't necessarily have a round one. This is more oval. So this would be for a patient with a wider breast. And when you look at the slope, the upper part of the slope, you can see that it maintains that nice natural slope of the breast. So shaped implants are for women who desire more of a natural look. The round implant usually gives you a little bit more of what we call upper pole fullness. Upper pole fullness is the fullness in the upper part of the breast. And this can result in slightly more voluptuous look uh, and slightly more defined cleavage in certain women. So the two, the, one of the basic decisions is to choose what shape of implant we're going to use. Another question that I get in almost all of my breast augmentation consults is regarding the profile. A lot of my patients tell me, well, my friend had a high profile and I really liked it, so I want to do a high profile, or my friend had a moderate profile and I really liked it, I'd like to do a moderate profile. The profile is much more dependent on the patient's individual anatomy. And it's not really something to get hung up on because it's so different from one person to another. For example, when a patient comes to me, even though it's not the most accurate way of talking about sizes, we usually refer to breasts in cup sizes. And there is a lot of variability in between different bra manufacturers, but cup size is still a very reliable way of talking about the breast size. So for a given width of the breast, I have a range of implants that I can choose depending on what size bra the patient would like to be, how big they would like to go. So if I have a very small, thin patient who wants to be a modest B cup, then in her, a moderate profile, small implant would really give the best result. Versus if maybe she wanted to be a C, something a little bit fuller, then at that point I would have to make the switch to a higher profile implant because it will give me more projection for a narrower width of the breast. So when you think of the breast in two dimensions, it's like a circle. And you want the inner circle, which is the implant, to just be a little bit smaller than the outer circle, which is the breast. You wanna fit the inner circle to the outer circle. You never want an implant that is wider than the breast, and you don't want one that is much narrower because then you won't get the fill that everybody loves, the fill of the upper part of the breast, the fill in the cleavage definition. So when I take my patient's measurements, one of the most important measurements is what we refer to as the base width of the breast, which is essentially the diameter of a two-dimensional circle. And I wanna choose the implant that's gonna fill that circle to give that nice filled look without going past the borders and which can really create a lot of problems down the road. The basic types of implants are saline and silicone. Saline has really fallen out of favor over the years because it does have a lot of issues. Starting with that, it looks the most fake and it feels the most fake. In addition to that, they have the highest rupture rate, so the highest chance of rupturing inside of the patient, plus the highest rate of capsular contracture. Capsular contracture is a long-term complication of breast augmentation, and it is when the scar tissue around the implant thickens and it deforms the implant, and it usually requires another operation. So when I am choosing the best implant for my patients, the two parameters that I most look at, capsular contracture rate, and rupture rate. I want my patients to have the implant that has the absolute lowest capsular contracture rate and the absolute lowest rupture rate. And that is why I use Cientra implants. There are three manufacturers of breast implants in the United States, Cientra, Allergan, and Mentor. 
Sientra's implants have the lowest rupture rate, the lowest capsular contracture rates. They also have the best warranty of all three manufacturers. And one of the best parts is that they only sell to board certified plastic surgeons. So you know that if you are getting Sientra breast implants, you know that your surgeon must be board certified in plastic surgery, as opposed to Allergan and Mentor, where literally any physician can purchase them and implant them. So to sum it up, doing your research starts with before your consultation. It's looking at the surgeon's website, it's reading the information, it's talking to friends, it's deciding what type of look you want. And then in the consultation, we'll talk about what's possible, what things we need to do to achieve that look. And of course, develop confidence with your surgeon.